Yes, thank you very much. Yes, very clear, thank you. So I thought you already have been looking at videos all morning, so I will not show you videos, but I'll show you all uh, the evidence in the literature. Um, so the title is Tips. <clears throat> so these are the three tips. So basically I can stop after this slide. So the tip number one is get informed. So study the evidence and I'll show you, I'll summarize very briefly all the evidence for you. Uh, second is get trained. I'll tell you something about training. And finally, um, feedback. And I'll tell you something about how to get good feedback and how you are uh, working your results compared to other centers um, in Europe in this case. So first, let me tell you about the evidence. In 2016, when we had the world meeting in Sao Paulo, um, we did a consensus conference and we started the evidence. We published this in the March 2017 issue of HPB. And at that time, there were zero randomized trials. And there were also no studies on how to get started with minimally invasive pancreatic surgery safely. So bad times. And then next year, we did a global survey. We asked uh, surgeons and we got response from 435 surgeons, <clears throat> sorry, from 50 countries. And of the surgeons that responded, 79% was doing minimally invasive distal. And uh, last night I heard that many of the Turkish surgeons are doing minimally invasive distal pancreatectomy. One in three was doing minimally invasive Whipple. I think there's some response bias, of course. And 16% was doing robot-assisted pancreas surgery in this global survey. But now, today, 2019, and we have six randomized trials on minimally invasive pancreatic surgery. So the last two years, there have been a massive increase in the randomized trials. So at this talk, I'll tell you about the distal pancreatectomy talks, and then two talks after this one, I'll come back, and I'll talk to you about the Whipple trials. So first, the distal pancreatectomy. The first trial was the Dutch trial, which we organized, the Leopard 1. Uh, the second trial is the LAPOP trial, is a new trial from Sweden, a single center trial. And the ongoing trial is a European trial, the diploma trial. So in this talk, I'll take you through these three trials for distal. Of course, very recently, we had this nice uh, meeting in uh, Miami, in a hotel as beautiful as this one. You see all the seats at the at the pool were empty because we were all working. And with this group of people, and there are some Turkish friends in here as well, we created these evidence-based guidelines. Uh, you see, we positioned ourselves as the number six, but if you turn the image, it actually looks like a pancreas. Uh, we did 28 systematic reviews. Actually, the PhDs, eight PhDs did the reviews. Each review then led to a recommendation. And we followed very strict methodology guidelines with the grade for the recommendations and the agree for the external validation. We had open pancreatic surgeons judge the recommendation. So it was both evidence-based, but of course in the exact wording there can be differences. And open pancreatic surgeons were there and they judged the recommendations. I think, Christos, you were one of them. I think this is very important. So these were published two weeks ago, the Miami guidelines. You can find the PDF um, online. And I think it's a very important document. In this document, there are 20, 38 recommendations. And on training, it said that a training program is strongly recommended for all surgeons. So if you want, you can take this back to your hospital if they need to give you some fund to go abroad to get training or where, whatever you, you want. But this is the international guideline. It was supported by all big international associations. So I think it will give you in your clinic a lot of power if you need to convince people of minimally invasive pancreatic surgery. This guideline is supported by all big international associations. So then a little bit about training. If you start with any new technique, there is a framework on how to get started. It's internationally accepted framework and is the ideal framework. 
And I won't take you through all the steps, I just want you to hear this name. And in the Netherlands, we followed this framework when we implemented minimally invasive distal pancreatectomy nationwide. First, we looked at what we were doing as a country. And between 2005 and 2014, only one in 10 distal pancreatectomies were being done minimally invasive. Only one in 10. But of these highly selected patients, more than one in three of the cases got converted to open. Now, conversion is not a complication. And if you think it's better, you should definitely, of course, do a conversion. But this tells you that the quality could be further improved. And then if we looked at the outcome, minimally invasive distal pancreatectomy seemed to have better outcome with less complications and shorter hospital stay. But if we did a case matching, it was actually no longer significant. So we had a meeting with all Dutch pancreatic surgeons, like you have here today, and we made a proposal. And the proposal is, we will train all of you for free, but immediately after the training, we want you to participate in a randomized trial. Of course, good Dutch surgeons as we were, everyone said yes, 100% agreement, because they got the training for free. So we made a program with my good friend Moa Bouilal, who was at the time in Southampton, who has now become the chair in Brescia, Italy. We made a very detailed description of the technique in great detailed steps with videos. Then surgeons were proctored in their OR. So Mo came to their hospital and 18 surgeons were trained in their hospital and 16 surgeons also then came to me in Amsterdam to do surgery together with me. So really live proctoring. So here you see Mo in uh, four different hospitals in the Netherlands. We made these drawings. I, I just looked at a few of your very nice videos and I think a very important trick is to use a vessel loop sling around the pancreas so you don't get bleeding when you start grabbing the pancreas. And we made very detailed descriptions of the trocar positions, etc. So we published these results in Annals of Surgery. After the training program, there was a 700% increase, factor seven, in the use of minimally invasive distal. The conversion rate went down from 38% to 8%, and we were operating more patients with bigger cancers and higher ASA scores. And in the training program, in the first 130 patients, mortality was zero. So you can imagine we were quite happy, and we said, okay, immediately move on, with the randomized trial. That's this trial, the LEOPARD trial, also published in Annals of Surgery. And I'll quick you, quickly take you through the most important results. We only included, of course, this is the first trial, so we did not want to start with the most advanced cancers, okay? So we started with the easy ones. So only the tumors that were confined to the pancreas, not growing outside the pancreas posteriorly, and a centimeter away from the celiac trunk and the portal vein. Of course, if you're more advanced, you can do more, but I think if you're starting, these are very reasonable criteria. If a tumor was bigger than eight centimeter, if a second operation needed to be done, if the patient had radiotherapy or chronic pancreatitis, they could not go in the trial. <clears throat> and then, very interestingly, we blinded the patients. So in the surgery, they got this big dressing, and we did not tell the patients how they were operated. And at day four, we then score. We asked them, what do you think? Is it laparoscopic or open? And very interestingly, in both groups, 40, 40% thought they had the other operation. So it was very difficult because also the open patients were going home quicker. Was 40% thought they had the laparoscopic operation. So this blinding was very successful. It was also more difficult for us to show a difference between the groups. But it was very successful, and it has been shown in trials from Heidelberg and the Netherlands before for other conditions. You can actually blind the patients that they don't know, do not know the difference often. So these are the details of the surgery. You see that very few were done with the robot at the time, and you see that in half of the patients the spleen was uh, preserved, mostly for cancer reasons, and it looked fairly similar. Conversion, again, as before the trial, 
after the training was 8%. Blood loss was significantly less, and operating time was just about uh, 40, 40 minutes longer. And in the laparoscopic group, there was zero blood transfusion. So this was done in 14, 14, 14 Dutch hospitals. So this is the primary endpoint, was time to recovery. Not hospital stay, because hospital stay depends on a lot of factors, time to recovery. And time to recovery was defined as you're back to normal mobility, you only need oral pain control, you have sufficient caloric intake, no IV fluids, and no signs of infection, so no fever or high CRP. And we, we thought that these individual endpoints would not differ significantly, but they did. Each of these components of the primary endpoint was significantly superior for laparoscopic distal pancreatectomy. And overall, the time to function recovery, so when all these boxes were ticked for the patients, was four versus six days. And this was true for all these points. Look here, even caloric intake, three days quicker with minimally invasive distal. So I think this is a clear benefit to our patients. Other endpoints, ICU stay, no difference. Hospital stay, of course, also shorter. Readmission rate high, but high in both groups. And zero mortality in the minimally invasive group. So I think we're very happy with these results. Quality of life, also superior. You see here up to 30 days. Of course, if you wait longer here, 90 days, then quality of life is back to normal again, but we all know this. And then the costs. This may be important for your hospital administration. Cost, it may be a bit cheaper, but it's definitely not more expensive. So it's definitely not more expensive. Of course, you need a few more tools in the OR, but two or three days shorter hospital stay saves you a lot of money. So then the LAPOP trial from Sweden. It's a single center, non-blinded trial in 60 patients. Primary outcome is a hospital stay, and the manuscript is currently under review. But I can tell you that the results are also positive, so also shorter hospital stay in this trial. So then we come to the European Consortium. Uh, those of you who do not know this, please go to the website, emips.com. Several members from, from this association are also a member of emips, and I think this is very important. We did this study in Europe, where we combined data of more than 1,300 patients undergoing a distal only for cancer, and we did a matching between minimally invasive and open. And again, this was published in Annals of Surgery. And you see that the survival curve, sorry, the survival curve was exactly the same between minimally invasive and open, and that's where there still is a debate. However, in this study, we saw that although minimally invasive had the similar survival, resection rate, radical resection rate was higher, which is strange. Why would it be higher? Conversion rate was very high, open, had more lymph nodes, more multivisceral, and more often resection of Gerota. So this is very strange. I do not understand these findings. So we said we need to do a randomized trial, and that's the diploma trial. So we had several meetings during a period of three years. With uh, This is our meeting in Amsterdam. This is our meeting in Switzerland to discuss on all the details of the protocol. And in the end, 54 hospitals in 13 countries are participating in the trial, which includes both America, Russia, and Europe. So I think this is very successful. At the moment, the first 23 centers have started randomizing patients from 10 countries. And currently, we are nice on track, as you can see here. And we randomized 33% of the patients, and I'm I'm struggling to stay ahead of Verona and Milan. I think I will lose in the end, but that's, uh, that's okay. So finally, get feedback. The guidelines advise you strongly to follow the trends and outcomes and to assess the quality of your minimally invasive surgery, so to be transparent. So the EHPBA has um, supported the EMIPS consortium to set up a registry, and this is my main uh, question and advice to you,
please consider to participate in this uh, registry. It's the official ESPBA registry for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. The Turkey country lead is Fatih Khan. And there's an online data capture system. It's really simple. It is for free. And you will get an annual report of your results. You will see who you are. You do not see who the other centers are, but you see the average results of other centers. So in a scatter plot, you can see what your results are. And you can show them to, of course, yourself, your team, hospital administration, and to your patients, if you like. And um, we can do mutual studies with the data, but if you do not want to participate in a study, of course, your center, you can drop out. So every time there's an analysis for a manuscript, you get asked permission. And so go to this website, emips.com. And this is the board. You recognize many of it. I'm leading it together with Moab Bouilal, now in Brescia, but for instance, uh, Thilo Hackert here is also in the room uh, today. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, of this first talk, my take home message to you is that in the past two years, there are now six randomized trials in minimally invasive pancreatic surgery. I think we're doing really well. You can do big training programs and help each other. There's a clear benefit for minimally invasive distal pancreatectomy in trained centers. Purely for cancer, the debate is ongoing and we're doing the diploma trial. Please get and read the Miami guidelines in Annals of Surgery. And if you are not already a member, please join the group, join emips.com. So back to the first slide. My tips for you, get informed, get trained, and make sure you get feedback. Thank you very much.